Okay, I've let this firm up. I've pretty much um, built it up as far as I want to go. Uh, so I'll show you what you do at this stage. Um, one thing is, once you've turned the corner and it's going in again, assuming yours is like that, um, but once you've gotten pretty far along, the template isn't really so important anymore. So you don't need to really worry about the template anymore because you can see your project. And so what I recommend to people when they get to this stage is that they get down with it like this. And then you can just see on this side, I don't know if you guys can see, but I can see on this side it's a little curved, on this side it's a little flat. So I'm just going to make those two sides match up. I'd rather have that nice little curve. Okay. So once it gets to this stage where it's stiff but still flexible, you can um, turn it and match up the two sides. And turn it and match up the two sides. And just get it so it's symmetrical that way by just turning it and just continuing to keep that shape all the way around. So it looks like a pretty nice, it's like a little grapefruit, right? Nice little shape. Um, if it's too stiff uh, to uh, mold, don't worry. By the time you're done um, refining, it'll be soft again, and then you can go through that process again. The other thing is a lot of times students want to use the template to make the oh, the the mouth. And what you want to do for that for sure at this stage when you're finishing up is just use something circular to make that mouth. So I'm just going to um, use this guy to make the mouth. And I notice that when I try to do that, there's a little bit of a gap here and there. So I'm just going to, oops, <laughs> I'm just going to, um, there's like a little gap right there. So I'm just going to make a little mini coil and build up this section just a little bit. Okay. And there's just a little bit of a thin spot there too. Okay. So then once I've done that, I can then take this guy and make it perfectly round. And then I'll show you how to make it clean at the top too, because this isn't very pretty. The first thing people are going to see is the top. So you want to make the top pretty. So I gave you this wood um, tool mainly really as a scraper, not really as a knife. I think you might, I might have mentioned that. So anywhere where you have a big bump, this will scrape down those bumps. So that's the first step in the process is to scrape down any big bumps. I'm just going to go around and just get rid of that. And of course, it doesn't make it smooth, but it takes off some of the bigger ridges. This is your main smoothing tool. It's called a rib tool. This takes off most of the big ridges, which the rib tool will have trouble doing because it's this is rubbery. Um, this is stiff, obviously, wood. So this takes off some of the biggest ridges, which, again, the rib tool won't. If there are little sucked in spots and it's flexible enough, I can um, push those out so that it um, so that those spots are not flat. That's another good first step. OK. And notice how rough this is right now. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and get it in here. And it really depends if it's this is this bottom part is really rock hard. So I'm actually using a fair amount of water, but generally I would say, you know, squeeze out the sponge well. Generally, I just want to, I noticed as I was scraping that this had dried up a little more than I would have wanted. Okay, so now there's this guy. So this rib tool, you'd think you would scrape with it like I was with a knife, but you actually rub with it. So you're actually pressing it into the project and smoothing by buffing the project more or less. All right. So I'm just going to go around and do that. And again, this surface is a little bit hard, so it's not working as well as I would like it to. So I'm just going to wet it. And that's, again, the great thing about clay. If it too, gets too soft, you just set it aside. If it gets too hard, you just add a little water, let it soak in, and within a few minutes, it's going to be the consistency you want. Okay. So now it's starting to take a little more off now that I've gotten it a little bit softened up. The other thing about softening it up is in you can see there are some nooks and crannies. Those This is never going to solve that problem, right? No matter how much I rub, that little nook is never going to come out because it's just too deep. So if it was soft enough, I might be able to push it out. But um, what I'm going to do instead is make sure it's wet because if you add um, soft clay to this hard clay and it's not wet, 
what happens is it seems to stick because the soft clay is sticky, but later when it dries, as the soft clay um, shrinks, it, it, um, it flakes off. So please make sure you wet the surface well before you do what I'm doing. And notice I'm just sort of finding these spots. You don't have to be a perfectionist at this stage, just sort of fill in the spots that look like little nooks and crannies. And I'm just sort of using my finger a little bit as a refining tool because this is hard. Again, I'm giving it another wetting just to make sure that sticks. And with this guy, from time to time, you want to just kind of keep it clean. And that actually gives you some more goop to work with. Okay, and again, notice I'm not scraping. I'm rubbing with this guy. All right, and this takes some time. This is the most time-consuming part of the project. Right? But you can see how much of a difference I've made already. And again, because this is a little hard, I'm just going to give it another wetting. But up here where it's softer, I probably would use very little um, water. Okay, and you can see up here where it's softer, the rib tool works more easily. So you'll get used to what you like. And if, you know, if I wasn't in front of the video, I probably would have wet down that bottom half a couple times and just let it set up. But I just didn't, for some reason, I just didn't want to hit pause. But you can see the more I work this, the better it gets. It just kind of keeps moving the clay around. And then I've still got this like little, little canyon right here, just this little tiny canyon. And again, you don't have to be a perfectionist when you add the clay because the um, rib tool is going to smooth it around. Uh, if it is, a, if you do notice later that there's a big bump, remember this guy is for the big bumps. Okay. I'm going to give this another just quick wetting at the bottom, but not at the top because the top is nice and um, soft. And again, I'm going to um, I'm going to clean this off. This is a nice way to clean your uh, rib tool. Just use your knife, and then this becomes nice goop to smooth things out with. Okay, so now I'm going to just give this another rib tool treatment. And up at the top, it is a little soft, so I'm going to avoid that and just come back to it later when it's firmed up more, or I'm going to totally deform the pot. And you'll see, you you know, it looks pretty good now, but there's still, if there's like a little depression there, there's a little nook right there. And what happens, I find happens is I get it to a point where I'm pretty happy with it, but then I, I move my way around and I let it firm up more. But you can see I've made a huge difference in just a few minutes. Okay. And then once you've done that, you'll want to, if, if it did get a little deformed, just use your circular tool and get down, get down with it and just make sure everything is nice and symmetrical especially now that I've softened it up a little more, it'll be a little easier to create the symmetry. So, um, so you're always working on that at the same time as you're smoothing. So while I'm smoothing, it makes it a little more flexible and I can really perfect that shape. So it's a nice, perfect little grapefruit, okay? Or whatever shape it is you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna work on this a little more. I'm gonna let this top part firm up so I can show you what to do to make that mouth perfect. So if I was about to stop, this is a stage where um, you really start to need to get the clay off of your tools before you take them over to the sink, or uh, this is just too much clay to wash down the drain. So again, um, I might use my rib tool to clean my knife and my knife to clean my rib tool and just scrape off as much of that clay. And if it's nice soft clay, you can save that for when you're filling your little pits, put it back in your bag. You can hear the bag, you can't see it. And then I'm just going to use this guy to scrape. You don't have to get every little bit off, but you want to get as much off as you possibly can. And that even goes true if you have a bowl of water. If there's a bunch of sludge in the bottom, just pour out most of the water and pour the sludge in. Get the sludge into your trash can, okay? So clean your tools as much as you can before you put take them over to the sink at this stage. That becomes really important.